Hey everybody, hello, hi and welcome. Um, I wanted to show you guys this plant here. It's pretty early in the morning here. I'm pretty tired. Um, I'm very tired actually, but I really wanted to get this video out because it's, it's just such a beautiful plant and I'm quite proud of it. Uh, I know I owe you guys a couple of videos. I'll try to make an air layering video soon. I'll try to make, um, Ariane, if you're watching this, I'll try to make you your orchid video too. Um, but yeah, for today, this guy's the star of the show. This is Domino Spathophyllum, or Spathophyllum uh, Willisii variegata. It's the variegated peace lily, and it's such an easy care plant, you guys, and it's so rewarding because each and every single leaf is so nuanced. And what I mean by that is you get this really just interesting old-fashioned variegation where some of the leaves are just really kind of muted and kind of more subtle. So here's a good example of that. And then some of the leaves are more like in your face and just really intensely marbled and it's just incredible. So right off the bat, I just want to say this has a very, it's not a very static variegation. It's stable, so if you propagate this plant and divide it, it'll still keep its variegation. But it's definitely the kind of plant where it's very dependent on light. It can, for a while, revert to almost green and be very, very subtle in its variegation if you keep it too, um, too long in the dark. And it's incredibly phototropic. So what I do with this guy, I don't know if you guys can see, starting to lean towards me here. That's because my light source is behind me and it's a little darker on the other side of the room. So if you want a nice, well-rounded plant, I recommend turning it a quarter turn every single day and you'll get a nice, even um, form. Uh, this is, uh, not to say that it's not a shade-tolerant plant, all peace lilies and spathophyllum are typically very shade-tolerant, but if you just want that beautiful striking variegation, definitely keep it in brighter light. I wouldn't say southern exposure if you're here in the northern hemisphere, just because that might be a little too direct, but if, if you're into, like, the more subtle variegation like this, low light is honestly fine like the interior of a room even a dimly lit washroom they, they do pretty well but expect more of this variegation now this plant has a really nice blooming structure the peace lily it's a white spathe uh hence the name spathophyllum so it's got like this really nice sheath and then it's got like this i think it's called a spadex in the middle and then it has like all this pollen really easy to cross fertilize these guys and hybridize them into other hybrids uh, but you have to do it with another member of the Spathophyllum genus. Uh, this is a very, very, very long-lived plant. It's It can be a heritage house plant, much like Christmas um, cacti and stuff like that. People have these for generations. So it's a bit of an investment. Oh, I didn't mention this, I didn't mention this yet. So it's actually native to the frontier between Colombia and Venezuela. So Valle de Cauca and like um, the Maracaibo Basin and areas like that. Uh, but it's found its roots all throughout the, uh, the Southern American continent. It's kind of a spreader, this plant. It's a bit of a traveler. Um, a few things that I want to talk about, just very, very specifically on this plant, is if it gets too tall and leggy, just move it a little closer to a window. Uh, it's a little susceptible to chlorosis. So if you live in an area with tap water that's not very well refined, um, maybe boil the water before watering this plant or it'll go a little yellow on the margins for you. Um, if it dries out too much, this is a very dramatic plant. Um, I don't know if you guys have had other peace lilies at home, but they really do wilt and they really tell you when they need water. I don't recommend waiting that long till you water them just because it stresses out the plant, even though it's cool to look at. But I wait until the pot's pretty light. I wait until at least two thirds on the medium is completely bone dry to the point where the top of the soil is just like separating from the edges of the of the pot and that's when I water mine. Uh, if you notice brown spots more often than not and like crispy spots more often than not that's because you're underwatering or you your humidity is too low. <clears throat> Dang I can't talk today. <laughs> you guys ever have that when you're like too tired and it's just like ugh. I, I can't I, I can't English I can't Kent human today, it's just, I feel like gibberish is just coming out of my mouth. <laughs> but um, yeah, if you want bigger leaves on these guys, obviously bigger light. They do benefit from liquid feed fertilizer. Um, uh, you, you can get spider mites on these guys. They're pretty resilient against spider mites, I find. Not the biggest problem. 
<clears throat> uh, you can get melee bugs on these guys too. Doing a regular spray and dusting just to keep it clean and to knock off any spider mites that might be on it is a good idea. Um, I've seen one person in the past grow this in Lekka, and I just gotta say Lekka just does not have enough readily available moisture for these. They, they tend to suffer in Lekka from what I've seen. Best time to divide these is in sort of after the active growing season, even though they can grow pretty well all year round if they get optimal care. But for me that's about October, just because it stresses out the plant a little bit less. Uh, feel free to move these guys outside in the summer. Or, yeah, in the summer. <laughs> um, don't keep them in areas that are too directly like impacted by the heat and the sun. Uh, they do not like cold drafts. This guy is only hardy to about, I want to say it's 14 degrees Celsius is really pushing it. Like they definitely can't handle a frost or a freeze at all. Uh, they won't even come back from the roots. I speak from personal experience. This guy cannot um, <clears throat> be outside in the winter if it dips below freezing. It just seriously declines even overnight it'll become black it'll become mushy it'll have this really necrotic smell to it and you just really don't want that <laughs> so key takeaways from this domino spathophyllum spathophyllum willisii variegata if you want to keep your variegation looking really nice and marbled keep it warm keep it in a really really bright location uh, if you want more intense variegation keep it consistently in uh, more well-lit area and very ambient light they don't like too much direct light either uh, i water this guy about once a week they really don't need that much water but when you water water deeply and make sure it has excellent drainage i have some pumice in the mix here that i added just to air it up a little bit so drainage is really key um i find that this plant doesn't really like misting very often which is so interesting because it's a really tropical plant but i find that um especially when i started growing this one if I were to mist it, it would actually kind of cause these little brown lesions on the leaves, and I think it's just the excess moisture. If you let it sit on it, you mist it perhaps too late in the day, and then the moisture just kind of sits on it. It doesn't have time to evaporate, and then it leads to rot and all sorts of stuff. Um, if you want to divide these guys, it's really easy. They produce these like fans. I don't know if you can see this kind of like that black part in the middle and that white growing tip. If you just cut through those with like a spade or something like that, that's pretty darn easy to divide. You only need one of those like fans, but they look a lot better when they're in groups, I will say. They fill up really nice. It takes them a while to fill up. That's the other thing. So if you want a big plant like this, start off with a big plant like this. Don't do what I did. Don't, unless you really like the journey, but like they take forever to size up. That's the other thing I wanted to say. Um... <clears throat> Some people will have problems with the leaves when they come out. I don't know if you can see here, there's one leaf that's just trying to push through. And sometimes they don't uncurl properly and they get ripped. Um, don't cut off those leaves if they have a little rip or a tear in them. They're still photosynthetic, they're still going to feed your plant. But that's a symptom of so many different deficiencies. Maybe your plant just needs more organic humus material in the soil. But just something to be mindful of. Um... <laughs> To speak on toxicity, my brother and I were um, sitting at the table over behind me, excuse me, actually in front of me, and um, my brother was making some sort of a joke, I don't even remember what it was, <laughs> but he was like, oh, what if I eat this plant, is it toxic? And I was like, I don't know, I don't freaking know if that's toxic. So he, he had a leaf, and from personal testimonial, I can tell you this burns when you eat it, it burns your mouth, it makes it sting, it's got calcium oxalate crystals so just for the love of god don't eat this plant keep it away from little children um my brother learned that very quickly <laughs> and yeah so just really stay blessed you guys i hope you guys are all having a fantastic day i'll try to upload more often um and one more thing that i want to say is just all the support's been really beautiful i've noticed in my comment section you guys are all so positive um, and I've gotten corrected a few times. I got corrected just the other day on my uh, Gunnera Tinctoria video. And I really appreciated that because constructive criticism is everything. It's a learning journey. And w without it, you know, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, something in my throat. Uh, without it, then we both wouldn't learn, right? 
So I did have to do a reclassification on that video. I had the wrong genus, but you know, it's just really wonderful knowing that people are constructive and want to help. So I greatly appreciate that. Uh, the plant that I just showed you behind, uh, Dominos Bathypilum, 10 out of 10 recommends. Uh, yeah, have a beautiful day, you guys. Stay blessed and yeah, keep healthy.